We're going to Labyrinth Brewery. We're going to talk to one of the owners in the Brewmaster, Sean, to talk about his job and actually what goes into being a brewmaster because it's a lot more in depth than people realize. It's not as glamorous as a lot of people assume it is. You're not just sitting at work all day and just pounding beers. This afternoon, we're at Labyrinth Brewery in Manchester, Connecticut. One of the owners, I believe you're a co-owner, correct? Yes. Uh, one of the co-owners, Sean, uh, as well as the brewmaster was willing to speak with us today, talk about his profession. So I've always been curious necessarily what an actual brewmaster is, what distinguishes someone from being just called a brewmaster versus a head brewer? Yeah, I would I would say, you know, regards to brewmaster, um, it's not a name I typically give myself, and I think you, you'd get that same answer from uh, a lot of a lot of people that own, run, brew, and, and so forth. Um, you know, that's that's kind of a distinction that a lot of us would give to someone that has decades in the industry and a lot of accolades and uh, I guess, you know, maybe formal education, but just decades of experience. Uh, so there are a lot of us, you know, especially now that it's, you know, such a booming industry, um, you know, a lot of us are, are pretty green, in, you know, in comparison to that. Um, so generally most of us just, you know, we just, Call ourselves your head brewer. Doing research, looking online, there are programs for people like to be a brewmaster. I guess like there's certificates. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, there's uh, more so now than than previously. There's uh, multiple colleges that offer either certificate programs or degrees uh, in brewing technology or um, you know fermentations. One of them as well, just all encompassing fermentation, not necessarily specific to the. The brewing world but in general um it's definitely something that is available out there if, if someone wants to take that path and that that could be something from you know basic couple week course all the way up to like you're saying you know four year degree programs and, and further so how did you get started and decided one day or decided with your co-owner i want to open a beer distillery i want to open a brewery i want to get my items out there i want to get my beer out there i want people to try it people to enjoy it yeah i mean i think like uh like a lot of people um in the industry now now there's about about nine thousand plus breweries in the country now uh, it's 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 tremendous um how many i mean um you know it kind of started off in the, the home brewing sort of aspect and you know sometimes that works great as as a hobby other times it tends to spiral into the abyss of wanting to know more and know more and know more and you just keep digging and keep learning and you know it's a you know sort of a culmination of that and the love for doing it and just with you know certain life circumstances changing and decide to make a sort of make a make a leap of faith so so to speak if that makes sense so what would you say are some of the things that would surprise people about your job? Like what things or misconceptions that you think people have about not just your job, but just breweries or working in the um, beer industry as a whole? You know, I think that the largest misconception is that we're, we're just back there brewing beer, drinking beers, having a good time yeah i'm sure people just you assume know, you're drinking you're literally you're just downing yeah. beer all day long or, yeah you know in reality that's maybe you know we don't drink any beer when we're working because it's dangerous back there there's a lot of things that could really seriously injure a human so there's safety concerns and then um you know the actual sort of brewing of the beer is such a small part of the job it's really you know 80% cleaning and sanitizing and just making sure that that aspect is is on point which is you know you can brew the best beer you want but if you put in something that is dirty or unsanitized it's not going to come out too well in the end so that's a probably most of what we do back there you know? how do you guys come up with new beers that you ultimately decide to test and then take to market every place is, is a little different in regards to that you know we have a, a couple different ways that we do that now um really depending on sort of our comfort level of the style or the type of beer but you know usually we'll we'll think of a type of beer that we want to brew uh, you know style the parameters that we're looking for uh, the general profile and you know, we'll be pretty 
confident in it maybe and go on to our, our larger system um, right from the get-go and you know at this point kind of invest in the marketing aspect and go from there um, sometimes um, we'll be in more of an experimental phase where we want to try a few things tweak it a little bit before investing in that larger system when we have a we basically have a smaller pilot batch system where it's uh you know about one seventh of what we typically do and we just we brew it on that system we'll put it on tap um we get feedback you can actually scan a qr code here and as a, as a consumer and give us feedback and it comes back to me on a on a spreadsheet and I could sort of categorize that and see everyone's notes and, uh, you know, see if it's worth moving up, worth changing a little bit. Maybe, it, you know, while, you know, I thought it was great, maybe it's not what everybody else looking wants. For. Yeah, so um, it's kind of a, a few different things, you know, like that, that we, we, we sort of do. How do you guys come up with the unique names, the crazy names that I've seen or you look on cans or like the design, the crazy designs that like every, again, every beer is different and unique, like Turbo Love Juice. Hey you guys, so comment down below, what's the most unique name that you've come across for a craft beer or a beer in general? Yeah, you know, with the business in general, we try to really keep, um, or put like a lot of ourselves and who we are as, as people into the aspects of the, the marketing and everything. And we're, depending on the person, you know, we. We really, you know, quote unquote, kind of like nerdy, whether it's like like Dungeons and Dragons and gaming or like music nerds and stuff like that, and mythology and stuff like that. So you, you'll see a lot of those aspects in our, in the, the artwork, in the names as well. Um, you know, Turbo Love Juice is a pretty sort of easy example. It's our flagship uh, uh, New England IPA that's based off a, a Judas Priest album. Okay. And every single version of that beer, because we have a double, we've got a triple, we've got a pineapple version. Um, every version is sort of based loosely off a Judas Priest album, you know, because it's some of the music that, that we sort of listen to here. So it's, uh, and some of the things, again, they'll be, you know, mythology based and stuff like that. For those that don't necessarily drink beer or aren't familiar, what is, like, IPA, double IPA, triple IPA. Yeah, I mean, if we're, you know, kind of looking at sort of like the, I guess the, the American terminology for it, you know, um, when you start doing like a session, single, double, triple, quadruple, generally you're talking about the amount of alcohol in that in that product. And okay. that, that's from an you know, American perspective, that, that can change. But, um, you know, like the, the terms like double and imperial tend to sort of uh, be the same thing depending on who you're talking talking okay. to. But, uh, yeah, generally that's kind of based on alcohol content. You know, higher alcohol is going to afford more hops and all if, you know, we're speaking of, you know, IPAs and stuff of that sort. Doing a few things, production expansion and whatnot, and uh, have some more tanks coming in and all this kind of jazz. And, you know, that's eventually going to be a kitchen at some point. Over there, we just put the door in. But, you know, it's uh, we're a long ways from getting that kitchen going, but you know, a bunch of things. So, um, pay no attention to the mess. This is part of a new space that we literally just built right here. It's a new cold room we literally just put online two weeks ago. Um, and we're, uh, you know, previously or up till now, we've been paying a company to uh, come in and bring all the equipment to can our beer. Um, but now we're investing in a, a canning unit of our own. So this is part of the unit that showed up. Basically this puts labels on the cans. Um, we're still waiting for the actual machine that fills the cans and machine that actually moves the cans down the line. Um, but that's a whole, whole part of investment, you know, kind of where we're standing now, we're going to have additional tanks that are on their way. Hopefully in September it will arrive here. So it's, uh, you know, basically, uh, making more beer, hoping, hoping to uh, double our capacity. But this is kind of our, our main system here, our, our seven barrel system. Uh, and this is where our, our larger batches 
come off of. Um, seven barrels, you know, about 217 gallons. Okay. You know, give her ever flow, ebbs and flows out. I really give, you know, it really depends on the type of beer that we are brewing, how much we actually yield out of it. Uh, so typically this, this whole side here, you know, it's a one day process uh, to get the beer brewed. It basically what we call like the hot side of it. Um, and then from there, the beer is going to be moved out of here and it's going to go into one of our fermenters out back, which are um, any of these conical pegs, conical bottom pegs right here uh, of various sizes. A couple of them are twice the size um, and we basically brew twice into those tanks, uh, either in the same day or sometimes in back to back days, really depending on what, on what we're doing. Uh, you know, just uh, we tend to do that with a lot of our more popular beers, our flagship beers, again, such as like Turbo Love beers. We'll do larger batches of that in there. Yeah. Kind of behind this right here, this is, uh, this is our small pilot system. So this is where we brew sometimes, you know, test batches. Sometimes we'll go we'll brew, you know, odd styles that we know, you know, they're not going to sell the quickest. But, you know, some people will appreciate that they're on tap just to really try to keep some variety instead of just uh, coming in and there's 10 IPAs and we have nothing else, you know. So this might be like yeah. the system you use to test out like a new oh, yeah. idea or a new concept for oh, a yeah. beer that you guys, uh, like you mentioned, you might want to test out on tap here to get feedback from scanning a QR code or people checking it out. Maybe you think it's great, but the feedback might be, eh, probably yeah, not yeah, our yeah. favorite, probably not something like you might not want to continue with after getting feedback from other people, but this might be in the system or necessarily might, what you might use for it. Yep, exactly. Yep, that's uh, that's exactly what it is. Um, so we'll have the tanks there, basically sort of mimics what we do in the large system. And then these are uh, the few small uh, fermenters that we have. Um, you know, we're gonna have, you know, working product in there and some sort of state of flux right there, depending. So, and then, you know, they'll. A lot of these will end up on tap. Some of them never even see the light of day. You know, okay. because we want to change them or you know, we're particularly happy with them or whatnot. And um, you cry less about dumping something this size and dumping something this size. So, <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> about three times the size, so it makes yeah makes a lot yeah. more sense. Yeah. So this is you know we'll, we get about you know thirty one gallons of actual product out of here by the time it's done. And you know, here we're gonna by the time it's actually going on tap, you know, maybe 200 gallons of actually sellable product. Pretty small facility in general, and uh, you know, again, we're kind of in the sort of state of flux as we, you know, are expanding and figuring out where we're gonna put everything now. And you know, we used to only go. This was our wall right here, and uh, we had a, a double door right here that door sort of went out in this way into our entrance. Um, you know, we started construction at the beginning of March to expand back this way, give us more tank space. When did you guys open? Was uh, it 2000? Was it 2018. Oh, it was yeah, 18? Okay, yeah. I thought it was 2017. Okay. No, no, we, we wanted to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, August 2018, we, we opened up, so we'll, we'll be four years. Oh, four years, yeah. literally in about a month. Yep. Yeah. Do you have, or what would your, what would be your feedback for people interested in working in the brewing industry, people that, because I mean, Connecticut has, I'm not even sure, I lost count after a while, of how many different yeah. breweries are actually in Connecticut. It's gotta be well over a hundred, I believe, or? We're over 120 now, yeah, yeah. Over 120 total advice that I would give. You know, I think certainly anyone could really get into it if you have, you know, problem solving skills, willingness to work hard. Would I, would I want to get into it right now, personally again? Probably not as much given how many breweries are in the state and sort of the the flux of the you know, the the service industry right now. It, it's a difficult time. Yes. Um, but you know, it really can be done. I mean, you know, we had no brewery experience at all, none. It's just homebrew experience. Um, you know, we also none of us really came from any, you know, any great financial situation you know we just worked our butts off put together a good business plan 
sought out some humans that sort of believed in us and and went from there so it, it can be done it's it's a lot of, it's a lot of work as always thank you for watching make sure to subscribe and throw out suggestions for jobs you'd like me to check out